All right, so today I've got this uh, R390A. I acquired a Dayton Hamvention for uh, a very reasonable price of 150 bucks, which is great because it's a it's a little crusty on the outside, but it's got both the meters and everything. And as in the price point, uh, which it's worth it for me to try fixing this thing up. Uh, let's take a look inside. Let me back this up a little bit. The inside is, uh, focus, is very, very clean. Um, everything's there, all the tubes are there. Uh, in fact, the, the uh, let me focus again. The gear, the mechanical movement is uh, actually very smooth and clean. So, um, I'm going to give this thing a try. I'm going to try to get it to go today. Now, interestingly enough, it was damaged in shipping. I had to fly back from Dayton, so I shipped this thing. And, uh, you know, it just, it has a <laughs> some serious... Uh, shipping damage. So, uh, fortunately, all the mechanisms are working just fine, and it still uh, looks complete to me. But yeah, there's a lot of shipping damage here. But nonetheless, uh, I'm going to try to get to go because I think for 150 bucks, you know, it's totally worth it. It's also missing a knob. Actually, that was lost in shipping too. I have no idea how you miss a knob, but. Apparently, you gotta really peck the crap out of these things. They're, they weigh 75 pounds, so uh, it's understandable that uh, some someone t completely dropped this thing. But it's mill spec, so it should survive. The first thing we're gonna do is replace the. Uh, there's a fuse holder in the back, <clears throat> and uh, actually, it was already replaced once. And uh, then the end broke off before I bought it, actually. It was already broken off. So I'm going to replace this fuse holder. The fuse is still good. We'll replace that. We'll put a knob on the uh, front here. And then we'll bring it up um, slow the variac while watching the uh, B-plus from the power supply. Okay, so I've uh, placed a new fuse in the back there. Or rather, a new fuse holder. The fuse was good, actually. Um, I added a switch here for power and I found an interesting problem with this uh, last coil section the uh, ferrite broke off I was able to remove it from the core so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it back on and uh, put this back into place alright so I've glued this guy back on with uh, actually this liquid electrical tape which is uh, very rubbery kind of reminds seems kind of like the compound that was on this thing originally so uh, we'll reinsert this coil form and uh, we'll put it back on the air hopefully soon careful important because I tend to tune in I can AM broadcast can first. There we go. Wow, it's actually kind of tricky. Okay, that's back uh, and installed. It actually wasn't um, that bad. Just had to focus for a minute. Okay, so now that all that stuff seems good, let's do a little more one more inspection. Uh, before I locate a place to probe the high voltage uh, power supply. All right, here is the uh, rear, or rather the bottom panel of the R390. At the lower right, you can see the damage um, from shipping, but everything else looks okay. Um, I don't see any obvious uh, damage, so looks like there's a little note that on the 22nd of January 1974 
looks like solid state diodes were placed in lieu of the rectifier tubes, which um, are these sockets here. They're bent. Ah, let's see, well, there you go, bent over. That's pretty interesting. So, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll probe. You know, if, if those diodes were inserted, piggybacked on the tube sockets, which they probably were, that's how I would have done it, then uh, I should be able to probe high voltage right off those the pins of the tube socket, so I can watch it as we bring it up slow on the variac. Uh, and of course, the purpose of bringing it up slow on the variac and watching high voltage is to check for uh, shorts and the electrolytics, because you don't want to damage the uh, power transformer. That would be uh, that'd be really painful. So we'd have to order another one and wouldn't get the radio going today. <clears throat> Alright. Alright, so I've uh, connected a audio uh, transformer to that speaker. Actually, it's a 12-volt um, transformer which will match the impedance from 600 ohms to, uh, or should match the impedance from 600 ohms to about 3.2. Uh, I've got this voltmeter connected to the output of, oh, let's see if I can show you this. The output of the um, the AF uh, subchassis, which the AF subchassis contains the uh, filtering capacitors and RF, and rather the uh, the filtering caps and chokes, and it kicks out uh, 200 volts and 150 volts for the other uh, subsystems. So I'm I'm tied to uh, pin two of J. What is it? Pin two of uh, J six one nine off the AF sub chassis, and I'm expecting to see two hundred five volts uh, DC loaded. So it's going to be higher. Um, it's going to be higher unloaded, but uh, we should see some high voltage there. Maybe maybe two fifty three hundred unloaded. Um, so let's give it a shot, and this should tell us if there are any shorts. Okay, so uh, I got this thing ready here. I found out that it was very tough to probe the uh, high voltage output of the power supply. So I had to uh, put this little tack of wire into the uh, rectifier diodes here. Uh, the meter on the left is displaying uh, high voltage right off the power supply rectifier diodes, which should get up to 200 and, uh, 240 or so. Um, on the right is it's actually AC voltage between the chassis and the ground. I found that this radio was tripping the GFCI uh, in my laboratory here, so I think that the uh, power entry module uh, capacitors are leaky, or that um, the value, which is not indicated on the schematic uh, right here, might be high enough so that it causes some amount of... Uh, current to flow between the line and the ground, enough to trip a GFCI. And GFCIs are pretty cheap and crappy, so it wouldn't surprise me if maybe the GFCI is, is too sensitive. So what I'll do is I'll use the Variac, I'll bring the power up, and uh, we'll hear some audio here. Okay. So we'll bring it up slow. Seven. Sixty. And around one eighty, it uh, starts to give us some. Noise.
There we go. So we're starting to hear some noise from the speaker. As the receiver wakes up. Knobs are a little scratchy, which is not surprising. When the filaments are lighting up, the dial lights are actually both functional. Like get up a little higher. So the interesting thing is there's about 50 volt potential between the chassis ground and the line ground. Okay, listen to this. So the antenna trim is resonating with the uh, wire antenna I've hooked up to the back, so that's a good sign. Alright, let's get all the way up to 240. On the 40 meter, or rather the 20 meter handbag, like not too many. Not even. the antenna trim, but uh, can't quite tune in anything. So we'll have to see about that. Okay, so I've got good news. I've uh, connected this signal generator up to the R390's antenna input. Uh, I had to bypass the, um, the uh, line filter because it was tripping the GFCI. But as you can hear, We can tune in SIGGEN, no problem. And uh, all the way down to minus 110 dB. No problem. Um, 110 dBm, that's, uh, that's a microvolt right there. And that's at the 2. Yeah, even at the uh, 8 and 16. So I would say this thing, this is a very, very good sign. That means that the um, the VFO is working, the RF front end is pretty much everything is working. Even the meters are coming to life now. So that's a, that's pretty awesome. Um, I'm wondering if there may be issues with the lower band. So I think what I'll do is I'll check this is 20 meters, by the way. This is 14 F megacycles. I think I'll check the AM broadcast band next and um, see if that uh, tunes up. And uh, we'll go from there.